Some days you'll feel like you got it all together, and sometimes you won't. Sometimes you'll feel as though you have way too much to handle, and that you just wish someone would come along that would help you out, that they would maybe give you an encouraging word or say something nice to you, that you know, you've been working so hard at some project, you know, you just wish somebody would notice, someone would take the time to say thank you, or that they might appreciate you in some way that maybe no one else can see. You know, that's kind of what and why we have a God. That's kind of why we have a personal relationship with Jesus, because there are times when we will not be encouraged by anyone else except God alone. That only He and our faith in Him will let us know that He can see all, that He hears us when we call, that He knows us so intimately that He will meet you in some little way, some tender special moment where only you and He knows that He is watching you, He is taking care of you, He is providing. God always sends me some kind of little token of his love and appreciation. Even when, like yesterday, I blew it, you know, and I was so wrapped up in doing things. You know, today, it was a whole different story. It was like, you know, I kind of went, Lord, you know, I don't want to get caught up in the work. I want to get caught up in you. And So I did some devotional stuff, you know, and then I kind of took some time on the plants. And then the Lord sent me just like, we've been waiting for these tomato plants, you know, the little cherry tomatoes have been growing little tiny cherry tomatoes and, you know, they've been <laughs> not growing much, you know, because it's been kind of like warm and cold and warm and cold, so they, they stayed small. But then today, our beefy tomatoes, all of a sudden, there's two big, giant, beefy tomatoes on it, and it's like, they're bigger than the cherry tomatoes. And we've been watching every day for it, so I don't know when they grew, but they just, poof, popped up. And it's like, wow, Lord, that's so cool. And it was after I was taking the time to kind of stake out my my tomato plants because they've gotten so big, I have to now kind of you know get them ready to be set in their places, you know, where they're not going to move anymore. Although that's kind of dangerous out here with the wind. But anyways, I went ahead and was building this little kind of like you know vining thing to help it hold it in place and. That's when I noticed the tomatoes, and it was like, oh, wow. I said, man, my wife's going to get a kick out of this, Lord. And it was so good, you know, of God to give me that, you know, fruit, you know, to see it bearing fruit, to see the plant showing forth, you know, its vitality and its blessing from God to two little, well, they're not so little, you know, they're, they're little but compared to a big tomato, but... They're there, and you can see them, and they're like, wow, they're like busting at the seams to grow. You could see it, you know, you could feel it. And I was like, man, that was such a blessing to me, you know, to give me encouragement that, you know, God uses all things around us. God uses plants or animals or people or places or things, you know, to encourage us at times. And did you know that God could use you to encourage someone else when you're discouraged? That at the moment that you feel like you really wish someone would notice, look around. Seriously. Take a moment to back off of your own self and look around and see if there isn't someone else who also maybe no one's noticing, no one's paying attention to, no one's giving any compliments to. I'm famous for actually having, in the old days, I used to go out of my way to spend the time to find those people that nobody noticed except me. And then I would say something special to them, or I would send them a card, or give them a present anonymously. You know, it was like, you know, those old things that you used to see on TV, how you pass it on, or, you know, you pay it forward, or you do something nice for someone, or your secret Santa, so to speak. Well, you know, sometimes in Jesus' name, it's just enough to go ahead and encourage someone without having to be too religious or too carried away. And sometimes being religious is okay too because sometimes they just need a word maybe from the Lord. I know in my ministry, you know, that's kind of what happens a lot is that, oh sure, there are times where people get discouraged because of something I've written or 
maybe I didn't communicate it the best way that you know possible that I know how. And, you know, unfortunately, they get upset or they go off on a tangent. But you know, there are other people that at times I get a chance to encourage. You know, and they they explode with joy. It's like, man, they're just so thrilled to get some kind of compliment, some kind of thank you, or some kind of positive word where they just you know, no one had ever taken the time to say thank you or to bless them or to encourage them or to just answer their questions. You know, I like that. I like being able to, you know, encourage people and to let them develop in their own way, their own growth, you know, as they choose to grow, their own development as they want to become men and women of God the way they want or God wants them to be. And you know, that's kind of fun to watch and see how the Lord will do that in a person's life if only you will encourage them. So I would say, you know, try not to be discouraged, but then also try not to discourage anyone else. Because the Lord's with you. God's promised you to take care of you. God said, I will be with you in suffering, but I will be with you in your joys too. So when you are blessed, don't forsake the Lord or forget to give Him thanks. Always remember that God is with you. And that's the most important thing there is in life, to live. God with you. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groanings and am come to deliver them. He brought them out after that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness for forty years. There failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel, and all came to pass. He is faithful that promised. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, my words shall not pass away. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. You know, lots of times people don't realize there are promises God has given to take care of us, to be with us, to abide with us, to provide for us, to give us wisdom, to give us knowledge, to give us a good life, to give us an expected end, to bring us to eternal life, to give us that with which we have committed unto Him, whether it be our children or our, our loved ones, our spouses, or our jobs, or whatever it may be. Whatever it is that you have committed to God, God has promised He will take care of. You just need to trust Him for that. Because if he said it, not only will he do it, but you'll see it, and you'll give him credit for it.